Hello, welcome to the channel. Bringing you an update on our progress on the Wallapini. Jim out there uh, fixing the sprinkler head. But first, I want to bring you up to date on some side projects. When Jim and I moved on this property about 30 years ago, it was all just flat grazing land. There wasn't one tree, one shrub. It was just all flat land. And in that time, we have planted, oh, probably over 200 trees. Every year we try to plant a new tree um, and just add to the windbreaks that we have and uh, some of the fruit trees that we're trying very hard to grow here. This is our new tree that we planted this year. It is a flowering cherry tree. So let me show you some of the side projects that we have done as I walk over with my sidekick. We created this rock garden here uh, last year and planted strawberries and uh, raspberries. And at that time our chickens were free ranging over in this area and the cats tore it up. Cats loved it. One giant litter box. The chickens liked it too, so we lost all the strawberries <laughs> and the raspberries. We modified it and put this chicken wire around it to keep out the little rascals. You can see my strawberries starting to come up there. We just planted them about a week ago. Um, you're supposed to plant after the first frost in Montana, and that can be any time up until the first part of June. <laughs> that dog is not far from my side. Taking you over to the new berry patch, we had to put this at least, oh, I think it was at least 100 feet, recommended over 300 feet away from the strawberries and raspberries and we built our blackberry patch. You really can't see the things growing up here, but because we just planted it. But uh, this is our raspberry, or our, sorry, this is our blackberry bed, um, right next to a flowering apple, crab apple tree, a weeping, weeping crab, crab apple tree. Let me take you out to the Wallapini and I will show you the progress. The north wall of the Wallapini is finished. Um, lots of physical labor. I don't even want to figure up the amount of rock ton that we... I've got to move my dog back. He's making me nervous. Come here. You're close to the edge. The amount of rock tonnage that Jim and I have lifted and put in this. We have started on the east wall but we will leave that ramp um, probably one of the last things that we close up because we want access with the backhoe in here when we're building the roof um, and to uh, easily get in our dirt, our rock, our wicking baskets. That section where that ramp is will be the last part that we close up. Jim is down there working on the pony wall. Uh, that separates the cold sink area from the grow floor. And you will see that, you can clearly see that uh, filter cloth. The bank actually will be pushed up against that and that filter cloth, you won't be able to see it, it'll be buried. And that will create that wall. So let me take you down, down inside the Wallapini and have a closer look. Closer look at the Gabion basket wall on the north side. I think this is a really pretty wall. Uh, the rocks were larger. Um, just like the color of those rocks, but taking you over to the pony wall, a closer look. Let Jim explain what these wires poking out of the back of the filter cloth are. Uh, what we're looking at here is the wires that uh, Kim had mentioned uh, coming out uh, through the finished wall. I've got them wrapped around the wire right around that T-post that's drove into the ground there. And, uh, 
I have several of those T-posts into the wall in a different section right there. As you can see, the wires coming out, several of them. We'll uh, go ahead and attach these wires to some horizontal. Uh, it'll be a hog panel or cattle panel. It'll be horizontal. And I'll attach that wire to each one. Probably about a piece that's going to be about four foot wide there. And it'll be below grade as, so that at, yeah, dead man anchor as we uh, backfill against that uh, filter cloth. Filter cloths there to prevent any fines or any um, light material to go through and on through into our cold sink here, as you see. This uh, filter cloth is also providing hydrostatic uh, filtering and pressure off this. This is going to be a new uh, cage that we're installing right in here. You can see I've got the, my uh, line. I'm going to be lining up everything and attaching right to the uh, existing wall right here. We use these T-posts to anchor the walls instead of wooden treated posts because the pony wall is only 33 inches tall. And the space here between the south wall and the pony wall is about 33, 34 inches wide. And a little bit more on the dead man anchors. You have a lot of dirt pressing against the back of this wall. So the dead man anchors help to stabilize the wall from leaning forward. We're also going to do something similar with the tall walls before we backfill against those. So there'll be video on that. In a previous post, I talked about making sure when you get your gabion baskets, I use the term coated. Um, make sure that they're rust resistant coated. It's, it's really not coating because you can get gabion baskets that are PVC coated. And that isn't what we have. We have a galvanized metal that is rust resistant. It's it, PVC coated gabion baskets are very expensive, but if you're going to get these baskets, do make sure that they are rust resistant. Also, one of the questions that I've been getting a lot in the comments I see is, where did I get my gabion baskets? We went with a couple different suppliers. Um, I started ordering the baskets in the year 2020. And at that time, we were thinking that we were going to have a smaller uh, wallapini but as with all good intentions you might as well just flush the paper you wrote them on um, we built the the uh, cold storage area and we actually expanded the size of our wallapini in 2021 i had to order more gabion baskets and covid being in full swing um, we started seeing issues with supply. I actually got my baskets from several different suppliers. Um, some were back ordered, some of the orders were just canceled. Um, some orders when I did receive them were not complete. My recommendation to you on the supplies, suppliers, if you're watching from the United States, it's probably easier to buy domestic. And there are some really good supply companies out there. Um, Earth Wall Products out of Smyrna, Georgia is one. Gabion Supply Company, um, you can Google both of those. But Gabion Supply uh, is another big supplier of Gabion baskets. Also check with large landscapers in your area because Gabion baskets are used a lot in landscaping. And like I said, Jim and I used multiple suppliers and we ended up with the tap weld. We had wished that we had gone with the twisted wire. Twisted wire looks like if you've seen chicken wire, obviously it's not that flimsy of a gauge. And twisted wire allows a little more flexibility. Um, especially if you live in very wet areas where you're going to have a lot of hydrostatic pressure. Also, if you have a lot of clay in your soil, you might want to consider a twisted wire gabion basket. Uh, we're about, oh, I'd say halfway done with this pony wall. The next section we'll finish is that portion right there that takes the wall over to the uh, cold storage so there will be a staircase right here. There's going to be a gap in the gabion walls, um, about 30, 36 inches wide. And then we'll finish the last portion of 
the pony wall. Without further ado, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Leave any comments that you have in the section. I do read them and I try to answer your questions as I receive them. So happy gardening. Thanks for watching.